Today is all going to be about scouting, so we're going to look at what scouting is, what quirks and trinkets can also increase that, and including camp skills. So what regular scouting is, there are things such as critical scouts, and we will talk about that, but for now we're just going to go with the idea of a regular scout. Regular scouts will give you what is between you and the next room in each direction possible. Therefore, if you have two options, uh, left or right, it will scout one room out each. A critical scout will go out two rooms, and also secret rooms can only be detected through the means of a critical scout. Now, how is a critical scout determined? Your natural base party is always going to enter in with a 25% base chance, and that is going to be either increased through quirks, trinkets, campfire abilities, and also light level. To better understand the additional ability of light, we're going to go through that now. And I'm not going to go through all of the light conditions. If you want, please check out the Wikipedia to see what you get from light levels in general. But however, we're going to highlight this extra 15% from having radiant light. That's plus 15%. Therefore, if you have no trinkets, you're going to go with about a 40% chance. Anything on top of that will also give you a higher. Therefore, you have to keep that in mind. And we will go to pitch black, which is a 0% chance to scouting as well. So you won't even see scouting listed there because there is no scouting listed there at all. So therefore, if you want to maximize your scouting, definitely, definitely increase your light. And the things that scouting can detect other than, you know, battles and fights coming up are traps. And as I said, critical scouts will do rooms. Traps are obviously indicated by the purple squares when you're doing dungeons, and they can be disarmed typically for 8 reduced stress, which is very beneficial because not only can you reduce stress, you also don't take that stress and maybe the negative debuff that can come with it. Whether that's a DOT or a large debuff for 12 rounds, which you will find in the cove, which are very devastating if you don't have any medicinal herbs to take it off. Disarming traps should be done with only good heroes, and you can find those resistances on your hero if you right-click, and the percentage chance means their trap disarm chance. Therefore, you're going to usually want to do individuals with a high disarm chance, and naturally good people at removing traps are bounty hunters, highwaymen, and houndmasters. There's a couple other, but those three are fairly good at it most of the time. An interesting fact to keep in mind is, obviously the higher the scouting chance you get per room is the normal scout. Now your critical scouting is typically 50% after you get your first scout if your overall scout is below 100%. Now getting over 100% scouting is pretty crazy, but it's not impossible if you uh, directly work on it. There are going to be trinkets and sets and quirks that will allow you to get well above 100% if you decide to. And it may be beneficial to get around 80% if you want. The Ancestral map and the DLC for the Crimson Court on the Howlmaster also gives you a pretty good scouting chance. Therefore, you'd get to 90% with just those two alone. Therefore, any quirks you may get may push you to 100-110% without putting on any survival books or caution cloaks, which we will look into shortly after this. Now, the line to read here is, if your combined scouting chance is more than 100%, capped out at 200% practically, they say, then you will always scout and the chance of a critical scout is half of your scouting chance. Therefore, let's say you walk in with a 150% scouting, that is a 75% chance to get a critical scout, which is very good. Therefore, you will explore most of the dungeon and you will definitely find secret rooms. Some of the trinkets you're going to find are the survival guide. This is a common item, so obviously you'll find this in the early game. I've found if you have all the DLCs on, it's very difficult actually to get a survival guide early, which is very painful. But if you don't have any of the DLCs on, these should pop up rather regularly. And trust me, the 10% scouting, 10% tra trap disarm for minus one speed is very good and should be used often throughout the early game. The caution cloak, much like the survival guide. The caution cloak is 10% scouting chance, but I'd argue it's not as good as the survival guide based on the fact that it is missing the 10% scout disarm and the minus 10 speed, though it doesn't affect you every round after that. I think minus 1 speed on every round isn't nearly as detrimental as minus 10 speed, but it is definitely an option there if you have no scouting abilities. Then we get to the Ancestors map. This is obviously from a certain boss. If you don't know which boss it is from, I'm not going to ruin that for you, but it's a very good trinket. If you have the Ancestors map and if you get it early for defeating a certain boss, it's definitely something you should be passing around to most heroes if you do a medium dungeon or above. Short dungeons, it's not so much necessary, 
because once again you can't find secret rooms and often short dungeons have such a little amount of rooms that it's not really too too necessary to have a map. However, it's still good to have if you want to scout those traps and obviously maybe pick out rooms you don't have to do if you're doing a short battle room. Abilities I give you scouting chance is the Houndmaster with a 30%. You do have a Grave Robber who gives you a 20%, and you have a Bounty Hunter who gives you a 25% chance to scout. And one final thing here, and you kind of have to read between the lines on it, but when you scout a room, you can no longer be surprised. And we're going to go down to this line right here and see that. Scouting battles, heroes don't get surprised in scouted battles. That's very good, very beneficial, because if you have a party that can't be shuffled, this will save you. So this is very, very good. And we'll also read the top line here about uh, being surprised and the whole idea of scouting. There is a 10% chance of being surprised, surprising monsters and rooms and quarters that haven't, here's the keyword, been scouted yet. Therefore, they're saying haven't. So let's see what happens when we do scout. But in corridors and rooms that have been scouted, the base chance of surprising monsters increases to 25%. That's pretty good. You go from 10 to 25%. That's a quarter chance. And if you have trinkets on top of that, that can increase your chances of surprising, such as the Ancestor's Lantern or maybe certain camping skills. You could be potentially at 25%. It's very good, and the chances will differ based on your light level. Therefore, light level and scouting can be very synonymous with each other, but they don't have to be, but often they do go very well together. But as I'm going to say again, you can have a darker dungeon with additional scouting trinkets and not have a high light level and still do very well with it. I just want to throw that out there. We're just going to quickly go over a couple of the good scouting quirks here. And um, there, there are better ones and okay ones of each. There's Explorer and Scrounger. So once again, there's the Cove Explorer and the Cove Scrounger, 10%, 5%. And obviously, there's going to be the Runes Explorer and the Runes Scrounger, 10, 5. Then there's going to be the Warns, 10, 5, and the Weld Explorer and Weld Scrounger, 10, 5. Obviously, we want to shoot towards the Explorer. I wouldn't probably save the Scrounger, but I would consider locking in the Explorer because 10% on just a passive, I'll call it Explorer, is very good. You could have 50% Explorer depending on who you bring. I hope this video is helpful. If you're going to go do battle rooms and you're thinking, I just need all damage items, think again. You might want to bring along an extra 20% scouting just so you can get those additional surprises. And if you are doing a medium or large dungeon, make sure that you get those extra surprises and secret rooms your way because this will help you more than a couple of extra damage per hit. Removing an enemy from the lineup that is significant, such as maybe a high stress damage dealer or maybe a high damage dealer that you can't heal well, is going to help you much more than doing that 3 extra damage and going 3rd or 4th in your lineup.